right up with my finger and I go to my new login screen. This is called Picture, picture Password. And very easily, I'm going to press on my daughter's nose, press on the lemonade, and draw a line. And very quickly in, in, on my mobile device, I logged in, is Windows. This is the place you come to when you start Windows, and it's the place you go to get to all the applications that you guys are going to build that people are going to love. Instead of scrolling along many, many pages, I, I'm going to go ahead and pinch with my finger. So watch closely. I'm going to go like this and it's gonna zoom me out to see the entire set of the things that I have on my system. I can continue launching by going back to the start screen. I'm swiping my thumb from the right hand side of the screen and bringing up start. I'm gonna launch my newsreader application, which is another Metro style application. Now these applications, their user interface for these applications you get by swiping up from the bottom. And here I can add the new feeds, I can refresh, remove, or whatever capabilities your app wants to have, they come from what we call the app bar. And I know this video has soundtrack, so again, I'm going to swipe from the right-hand side of the screen and bring up the settings. In context of playing the video, I have access to all my system settings that I might want to do while I'm working with apps. Here I have the sound muted. And above this, I also have the settings for the application itself. So the applications share the settings space with the system settings to make it easier for people to not have to go out of context of what they're trying to get done just to change the volume or access something about your settings of your app. If I want to view two things on the screen, I can dock one to the right and dock it this way. Or not. There we go. And it's, it's always something that you want to do to, when you're on a web page. You often want to send a snippet of some content around to someone or send a, a link or a URL. I'm going to use something uh, out the right-hand side. We call these things out here on the right charms. And the charms are the way that, you, that the applications can power the system and add new capabilities to Windows. So I'm going to click the share charm. And when I do that, I see all the applications that I I support the share contract. I'm going to launch an application called FriendSend, which is a sample application that we wrote. And you see that the content that I copied from Internet Explorer shows up inside uh, this application. This application can show the kinds of capabilities it has to do with the content coming from Internet Explorer. And I'll share that. And so without, now I can get right back to browsing without having to come back to and find where I left off. Go into search, and here you see search the pretty much like you would expect in Windows 7. I can search my applications, my settings, my files, search your local hard drive, or search the entire universe uh, over the internet. My, my Bing application here will do, go ahead and search the entire internet for me. But with Windows 8, applications can make their content available for people to search directly. So here I have my music app. I'm gonna search for Viper Creek. And if I still wanna see what's going on with Viper Creek in some other context now, I go back to search, and I can search for tweets or any other application that has no knowledge. Here I am in the Windows Store. Um, so this is, it's actually our design philosophy for the Windows Store has been to just keep it really, really simple and make it easy for people to browse and find the kinds of things they need, or if they know exactly what they're looking for, they can just search and go find that app specifically. Um, it's organized into sections. This first section that you see here on the left is called the spotlight section, and that's a programmed section of the store. As I scroll to the right here, as I move over to the right, you can see sections or categories. There's a games category, and then there's a social category, entertainment, and all those things. I'm going to scroll over, let's see, where's um, the finance section? You'll notice down at the bottom left here, there's an app called Quicken. It's not a Metro-style app. It's a, you know, it's a desktop. I'm going to click on it. Here's a product, here's an app description page for Quicken. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to list Win32 apps as well as Metro-style apps in the store. And, and now I'm, I'm running Windows 8. Now, of course, it works just the same with a keyboard and a mouse. Here I am scrolling super fast across all the apps. I can roll my mouse down into the corner and get the start menu that shows the same as Julie showed when you swipe in on the side. I'm just going to go ahead and, um, and start a, a couple apps here. I'm just going to show you fast and fluid. So I just start apps and I just keep running. And you just, all you do is just keep starting those apps just like you would expect. But you know, we're pros, so hey, how about Task Manager?
So here's Task Manager that I've got up and running. So what does this look like if you're a pro and you want to see some more stuff? Let's look at the new Task Manager. It's kind of given a facelift. We figure it's been about 20 years, so let's give it a shot. Um, the first thing you'll see is you've got an immediate heads-up display with a visual representation of the amount of memory, CPU, disk, and network that any given application is using. Now, suspended applications remain loaded in memory, but you'll see they all have zero CPU. So, what are the, so you can see that all the applications are, are available and they're grouped by background processes, Windows processes, you know, even fancy little touches we did, like you could end the task and then if you're on Explorer, you could just restart it because you know you can't make it go away forever. So we also show you performance. So here's a really cool view of how the performance is going to look with CPU, disk, memory. In fact, I could go here, I could start this, I could drag this file over to the desktop and start a copy with the new fancy copy dialog and then you'll see the disk I.O. just spike and you've got this cool graphical presentation of how copying is going. You've got some of those uh, startup programs you're not sure of. Well, I don't have any on this machine, but if you did, you'd just see a list here, and then you could just manually disable them right here, right in the task manager. If you've got a server, multi server, a multi-user machine, you could see all the running programs and the resource utilization grouped by, by users. I've got a full details view that's got all the stuff you want to see. You could hide and show columns. You could even right-click and go and do a search out on the web for a particular exe to see what it might be. And, of course, you've got the classic services view as well. Now let's uh, take a look at the Metro style control panel because I want to show uh, a scenario about really being in control of your machine. So if you're like me, what you do is you, you have a machine, you do a clean install, and then you want to make sure you could revert back to a known state. And you've probably got a whole elaborate system of trying to put your files on the D drive and doing all this other stuff. We've got a new bold way to think about how to do that. We have a new feature that's called reset and refresh. And here you are, it's to be able to refresh your PC without affecting any of your files. It's right here in the control panel. You go right here, you click getting started. Here's what's gonna happen. Your files and personalization will not change. Your PC settings will be restored to all of their defaults and all of your Metro style apps will be kept and all the other apps like malware and extra toolbars will be removed. So I bet you'd like to see a little bit of how we work on multiple monitors. Well, of course, the good old Windows P command still works and I'm gonna go ahead and extend that monitor. Now you notice this desktop background is letterbox. Um, a little bit, so let me go ahead and extend this to two monitors. You're going to see both monitors up there, and now notice how that desktop spans those monitors and is completely filled. Now, uh, you're probably uh, wondering, like, hey, the taskbar. So here it is set up as a default, and so let me right-click on the taskbar and bring up the properties of it. Now, this is the new taskbar property sheet, and it allows some new options for, for dealing with multiple monitors. So right now I have it set to always uh, to showing everything on both taskbars. So if you're a kind of person that just moves back and forth between all of them, no big deal. But what about if you want to, um, if you actually want to have something that's um, unique to each taskbar? So only apps that are running on a particular monitor are visible. So then you notice everything fell off the bottom of the second monitor down here. But now I'm going to go ahead and drag this Explorer window over here. Watch this. Uh, oops, there it shows up.